ready to ditch those ramen noodles and actually build some wealth. I think we all are. Yeah. That's why we're diving deep. Absolutely. Into Ramit Sethi's I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Yes. This book has helped so many people get out of paycheck to paycheck grind mm -hmm. and figure out how to make their money work for them. Yeah, it's not just about saving every single penny. Right. It's about understanding the entire system. Yeah. And using it to your advantage to really build that long-term success. And we have excerpts from his book today. Yes. That cover everything from credit cards to investing. Absolutely. All aimed at helping you build that strong financial foundation. That's the key. Like building a house, right? Exactly. You got to have the foundation before you add the fancy stuff. That's a great analogy. Thanks. And one of the most important building blocks is your credit score. Oh, yeah. A lot of people don't fully grasp how important that is. It's true. Did you know that even a small difference in interest rates can cost or save you? Hundreds of thousands of dollars over time. Hundreds of thousands. Yes, hundreds of thousands. That's like winning the lottery. It is, it is. Except you earned it. It's the snowball effect of compound interest. Okay. Sethi actually has a table in his book that shows exactly how much your credit score affects mortgage payments. I love when books have visuals. Me too. Okay. Someone with a great credit score could pay hundreds of thousands less in interest over the life of their loan compared to someone with a lower score for the same loan amount. Mind blowing. Right? Yeah. Absolutely. We stress over coupons for like a few cents off. Right. And here we have hundreds of thousands of dollars just... Just sitting there. From credit scores. By understanding the system. Okay, so good credit score is the foundation. That's step one. How do we build it? Credit cards. Okay, don't freak out everyone. No, no, no. I know people hear credit cards what? and they're like, oh no, I'm hiding, I'm cutting them up. Don't worry, we're not advocating for spending sprees. Okay, good, because I already maxed out my latte fund. Sethi views credit cards as tools. Okay. They're powerful when they're used responsibly. That's the key. And they can actually help you build a really solid credit history and unlock all these benefits. Okay. Like cash back rewards, points, even consumer protection. Consumer protection? Mm -hmm. What is that? Does that mean my credit card company will finally fight those robocallers for me? Probably not the robocallers. Okay. But they can be your ally in situations. Do you remember that story in the book where he disputes a charge with Sprint? Uh-huh. He uses his credit card company's protection to get his money back. Wow. It shows how understanding the system can actually work for you. So it's like having a financial bodyguard. Yeah, you got it. In my wallet. Exactly. Okay. But how do you choose the right credit card? Well... And how do you use it the right way? Sethi recommends being proactive. Okay. Don't just settle for whatever card comes in the mail. Oh, yeah. Those pre-approved ones. Yeah, exactly. Negotiate for a lower APR. Waive those annual fees. Wait. You have more power than you think? Seriously, I can just call them up. Yes. And be like, hey, how about you just lower this for me? Be polite, but be firm. You might be surprised how effective a phone call can be. Wow. Remember, they want to keep you as a customer. True. So they are often willing to negotiate. He even shares a story about how he negotiated out of a $20 overdraft fee. Get out of here. Just by being persistent. This is making me rethink my whole relationship with banks. Interesting. Because I just avoid them at all costs. Yeah. Like it's, a, it's like that relative that asks about your love life. Right. But maybe I'm giving them too much power. <laughs> That's exactly the point Sethi's making. Yeah. Don't be afraid to ask. Right. They're masters at sneaking in these fees. Oh, yeah. Teaser rates that skyrocket after a year. Uh -huh. Minimum balance requirements. Oh, that. But a simple phone call can save you hundreds of dollars. Okay, I like it. Think of it as a bonus just for being assertive. Okay, I'm adding negotiate with my bank to my to-do list. Good. Right after learn how to make a decent latte at home. Small steps. Hmm? So once you've mastered those basics of credit and banking, uh -huh. it's time to tackle investing. Investing? Yeah. Isn't that just for people on Wall Street? Oh. <laughs> with fancy suits. <laughs> talking about like derivatives and all that. That's a really common misconception. Okay. Sethi says that investing isn't about being a financial genius. Yeah. It's about understanding those basic principles and getting started. Right. He challenges this myth that only wealthy people can invest. Okay. And he actually highlights a pretty crazy stat. One in five young people believe that they will get rich through the lottery. Yikes. 
Yeah. Talk okay. about a long shot. Okay, so if not the lottery, what is the real path? It's about time and consistency. Okay. Even small, regular investments can grow significantly over time thanks to that magic of compound interest. We love compound interest. It really is magic. He uses a great analogy. He says it's like a snowball rolling downhill, just gathering more snow and momentum as it goes. Okay, so I'm picturing like a giant snowball. Exact. But made of money. Yes. It's pretty motivating. There you go. But where do you even start? Right. There are so many options. It's like going to a giant supermarket. It is. It's no list. It's overwhelming. Okay. Sethi has a solution for you. Lay it on me. It's called the 85% solution. Okay. It's not about finding the absolute perfect investment plan right off the bat. Okay. It's about getting started and taking action even if it's not perfect. I like that. He shares an example of a graduate student who just started investing with a small monthly contribution. Oh, okay. Just to get the ball rolling. Even with, like, a student budget. Absolutely. You can start building that snowball. Exactly. I like it. And one of the easiest and most effective ways to start is with a 401k. Okay, 401k, I've heard of them. Yeah. They sound kind of boring. Yeah, I understand. It's not going to lie. But trust me, this is where it gets really interesting. Oh, okay. Employer matching is essentially free money. Hold on. Yeah. Free money. They're adding to your contributions. Okay. So they're boosting your savings without you having to do anything extra. Why didn't anyone tell me this before? Right. I've been missing out on free money. It's crazy. Right. My whole life. Sadly, you're not alone. 84% of young employees don't contribute enough to get the full company match. Oh my gosh, that's so sad. It's a huge missed opportunity that could cost them thousands of dollars. Okay, this is like a wake-up call. It is, it is. So tell me, break it down, what is a 401k and how do I make sure I'm getting all that free money? Think of it as a special savings account for retirement. Okay. You contribute a portion of your income and that money grows tax deferred until you retire. Okay. And the best part. Yeah. Your employer often matches a percentage of your contribution. So they're just doubling my investment. Pretty much. It's yeah. like a supercharged savings account. It is. It is. With a built-in bonus. It's amazing. Okay, sold. Now how do I set one up? Usually it's pretty straightforward. You just need to contact your HR department. Okay. And they'll guide you through the process. Easy enough. 401k. Check. There you go. But wait, Sethi also mentioned something called a Roth IRA. Yes. Is this like the fancy cousin of the 401k? You could say huh. that Roth IRAs are another powerful tool for mm -hmm. retirement savings, mm -hmm. and they offer tax-free growth. Oh, free growth. That means when you withdraw in retirement, you don't owe any taxes. Okay, so it's like a secret stash the government can't touch. It is. It is. I love secrets. But is there a catch? Because nothing in life is free. Well, the trade-off is that your contributions aren't tax deductible like they are with the 401k. Oh, okay. So you pay the taxes on that money up front. Okay. But in return, you get those tax-free withdrawals later. So which one is better, the 401k or the Roth IRA? It depends on your own individual circumstances and your financial goals. Sethi has a whole section called Growth Versus Access that breaks down all the pros and cons. Okay. He addresses concerns about locking up your money long term. Right. Or if you might need to access that money before retirement. Okay, so it's about finding the right strategy for you. Exactly. Your needs and all that. Exactly. Your own personalized roadmap. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about retirement savings. Yeah. But let's talk about the here and now. Oh, yeah. How do we manage our spending so that we have money left over to even invest in the first place? This is where Sethi's concept of conscious spending comes in. Oh, yes. Tell me more. It's not about deprivation or strict budgeting. Thank goodness I was already, like, dreading the no avocado toast lecture. Right. <laughs> Love avocado toast. This is all about understanding your priorities. Okay. Spending extravagantly on what you love. I like that. And cutting back mercilessly on the things that you don't. So it's about giving yourself permission to enjoy the things that you love without feeling guilty. That's the key. I like that. It's about aligning your spending with your values and your goals. Okay. He shares some interesting examples. One friend guiltlessly spends $21,000 a year just going out because that's what he really enjoys. Okay. And another friend who works at a nonprofit saves aggressively to support her passion for travel. So it's not like one size fits all. It's not. It's not. You figure out what matters to you. That's it. And then craft your spending plan around it. Exactly. He says it's not about being cheap. 
Go. It's about making intentional choices that support your lifestyle and your financial goals. I like it. Your money should be a reflection of your values. Okay, less about penny pinching. Exactly. More about making your money work for you. There you go. But how do you put that into practice? He has a system. Okay. He suggests dividing your money into different buckets based on your priorities. Like little sand pails you get at the beach? Kind of. Okay. You know, each one labeled with rent and guilt-free fun nice. and emergency taco fun. Dang. Well, maybe not that literal. Okay. You allocate your money to cover those fixed costs. Right. Like your rent, your bills, your investments, your savings goals. Right. And of course, your guilt-free spending money. Okay, so each dollar has a job. Exactly. And you make sure that it's working towards your goals. That's the whole point. Okay. So you can visualize where your money's going. Okay. And you can track your progress. You're in control. This is starting to feel a lot less like budgeting. Good. And a lot more like financial empowerment. That's the goal. And in the next part of our deep dive, we're going to explore how to make this whole process even smoother. Ooh, tell me more. By automating your finances. Okay, so we're leveling up. Absolutely. All right, stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back with more insights from I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Absolutely. Welcome back, Wealth Builders. We were diving back into Ramet Sethi's I Will Teach You To Be Rich. And this time we're tackling a topic that I think makes even the most seasoned investors sweat a little bit. Market volatility. Yeah, it's the roller coaster ride that makes people so hesitant to invest. Yeah. They're afraid of those drops. Yeah, and seeing the headlines right. about the market crashing can definitely make you want to hide your money under your mattress. Exactly. But is that the right approach? No. Sethi says that that fear actually keeps people stuck in what he calls the do nothing approach do nothing approach. They just do nothing because they're too afraid. Yeah, paralyzed by all the ups and downs. Exactly. Okay, but is he saying that we're overreacting? A little bit. He wants us to shift our perspective. Right. You know, people panic when the prices drop and they sell low and then they jump back in when the market's high and they buy high. Ouch. Yeah, it's the opposite of what you're supposed to do. That sounds like a recipe for financial whiplash. It is. So how do we break free from this fear-driven cycle? Sethi says it's all about a long-term mindset. Okay. Investing isn't about those quick wins or timing the market perfectly. Oh, yeah. It's about playing the long game and knowing that the market has historically trended upwards over time. So it's like riding a wave. Uh-huh. You're going to have some ups and downs, but ultimately you're headed towards the shore. Exactly. I like that analogy. And remember, time is on your side, especially when you're young. True. The longer your investment horizon, the more time you have to recover from any short-term losses. Yeah. So start young. Okay, so this reminds me of that story he shared about J.D. Roth. Yes. Who made a major investment during the financial crisis. I love that story. Talk about nerves of steel. I know, right? But it's such a great example yes. of having a long-term vision. Exactly. Because the markets tend to bounce back. They do, often stronger than before. Okay. That's reassuring. Yeah. But it's still a little scary. Yeah. What about those of us who are a little more like risk averse? Well, Sethi provides a framework for everyone, regardless of your risk tolerance. Okay. And he emphasizes the importance of diversification and asset allocation. Okay. Remind me, what's the difference between the two? Think of it this way. Diversification is like spreading your seeds across different fields, but within the same crop. Okay. Asset allocation is having different crops altogether. Gotcha. You wouldn't want to just plant corn right. No. You want to have a variety so that no matter what the weather is, right. you're going to have a successful harvest. I like that. Okay, so instead of putting all my eggs in one basket, exactly, I should spread them across stocks, bonds, maybe even real estate. Exactly. Okay. That way you're not putting all your eggs in one basket and you're prepared for anything. I like it. Okay, so I diversify my portfolio. Uh -huh. Am I good? Not quite. What else? You have to rebalance oh, yeah. over yeah. time. Okay. Some of your investments are going to do better than others, uh -huh. and that throws your allocation off. So rebalancing is kind of like hitting the reset button exactly. to make sure it's aligned with my original plan. Yes, you're essentially yeah. selling some of your winners Okay. and buying more of your losers Interesting. to bring that portfolio back to where it needs to be. So it's like pruning a garden. Yes, I love that. You trim back the overgrown areas. Exactly. And give those weaker plants a little more space. It's all about maintaining that healthy balance. I like it. He recommends rebalancing about once a year or whenever your portfolio drifts significantly from your target allocation. Okay, that sounds manageable. What about when you make a mistake? Yeah. We all make mistakes. We do. 
What if I pick a lemon? <laughs> it happens. An investment that just isn't doing well. Remember how we talked about how even professional fund managers fail to beat the market 75% of the time? Right. That doesn't mean they just abandon ship right. every time something doesn't perform well. So it's not just about reacting emotionally. Exactly. It's about understanding the bigger picture. It is. Okay. Sethi uses the example of a consumer goods stock. Okay. Let's say that's tanking, but the entire consumer goods industry is in decline. Yeah. Maybe it's not time to panic. Okay. You have to consider the context. So do your research. Yeah. Okay. Understand why it's underperforming. Yes. Before you just hit the sell button. Exactly. Okay. It's all about those informed decisions, not impulsive reactions. Okay. So. You're saying if you still believe in the company, right. you might hold on, uh -huh. but if you've lost faith, right. maybe it's time to cut your losses. Exactly. This is really helpful. It's about making those smart strategic choices. Yes. Not just following your gut mm -hmm. or the latest headline. Right. Okay. It's a long game and it requires patience, research, and a willingness to learn and adapt. Okay. So do we all need a financial advisor? Well, Sethi actually argues that most young people don't. Really? Especially if their financial situation is relatively straightforward. Okay. There's so many resources and tools available today. Right. It's easier than ever to manage your own investments. I like that, being in the driver's seat exactly. of my own financial future. Right. Me too. And if you do reach a point where you need professional guidance, okay. Sethi has some tips on how to choose the right financial advisor. So it's not about being a lone wolf. Oh, right. It's about... Uh, knowing when to ask for help. Exactly. It's about taking control. I like it. And making choices that work for you. This has been another fantastic breakdown. Oh, good. Of Sethi's wisdom. Yeah. I'm feeling a lot more confident. I'm glad to hear that. About navigating this crazy world of investing. Good. I think that's the goal. It is. It is. To make it feel less scary and more approachable. Absolutely. But it's not just about growing your wealth. Right. It's about creating a future where right. you have more choices and more freedom. Exactly. It's about aligning your money with your dreams. Perfectly said. And in the final part of our deep dive, we're going to explore some practical strategies to make this whole process even easier. Yes. More efficient through the power of automation. I'm excited for this part. Me too. Stay tuned for part three, where we learn how to make our money work for us even while we're sleeping. It's exactly. Welcome back, financial adventurers. We are wrapping up our deep dives into Remit Sethi's I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Yes. And this time, it's all about making your money work smarter, not harder. Exactly. We're talking automation. Mm. The secret weapon for building wealth without lifting a finger. Okay. Is there some magical money robot <laughs> that's going to handle all my finances while I sip margaritas on a beach? Maybe not a robot, but right. Sethi lays out a system that's pretty close. Okay. He's a huge advocate for automation. Okay. He says it takes the guesswork and the stress right. and frankly, the human error out of managing your money. I am all about less stress right. and more margaritas. So how does this financial automation magic work? Think of it like setting up a series of pipes right. that direct your money where it needs to go automatically without you having to remember due dates or manually transfer funds. So instead of relying on my willpower, which let's be honest, tends to disappear after a long day, yes. I can set up a system that does the heavy lifting for me. Exactly. Time me up. It's about leveraging technology to streamline your financial life. I like it. And ensure that you're consistently working towards those goals even when life gets crazy. Okay, first step in building this automated money machine. Linking your accounts. Okay. This means connecting your checking account to your savings accounts, your investment accounts, even your credit card accounts. So it's like creating a financial command center. Exactly. Where I can see everything in one place. Exactly. Okay. A lot of banks and financial institutions offer these online platforms yeah. or apps that make this really simple. Okay. You can monitor your balances, track your spending, and even set up alerts. Gotcha. So once my accounts are all linked up and playing nicely together, yes. what's next? Now comes the exciting part, setting up automatic transfers. Okay. This is where you put those pipes into action. I like it. And you decide how much money you want to allocate to each of your financial goals. So for example, I could say a percentage of every paycheck goes directly into my 401k and Roth IRA. Yep. Another chunk goes to my emergency fund and the rest goes into checking for my daily expenses. Exactly. I love it. It's like a series of waterfalls with each stream flowing to its designated destination. Ooh, I like that visual. Right. But the bad part is, 
it's happening automatically. Yes. I don't have to think about it. It takes the emotion and the temptation out of the equation. It's like paying myself first on autopilot. Exactly. Yeah, You're prioritizing those goals yeah. before you have a chance to spend that money elsewhere. Brilliant. And speaking of eliminating temptation, Sethi also talks about automating bill payments. Yes. Which, lifesaver. It's a game changer. For someone like me who, you know, occasionally forgets a due date two or three. We've all been there. Yes. It's one of the easiest ways to reduce stress and avoid those late fees. Okay. Yeah. Most billers offer online payment options and you can usually link your checking account and schedule automatic payments for everything. Okay. Rent, utilities, credit cards, loans. So I can kiss those late payment penalties goodbye. Goodbye. And actually improve my credit score. Exactly. Double win. Double win. I like it. And once you have all these systems in place, you can step back and just watch your money grow okay i'm starting to feel a lot less overwhelmed good and a lot more in control that's the power of automation yes it frees up your mental energy and it allows you to focus on other things right knowing that your finances are being taken care of in the background but what about when i need to make adjustments yeah like if i get a raise or decide to save more can i like tweak the system absolutely you have complete control you yeah. can adjust the amounts the dates even the destinations of your transfer so it's flexible it is it is it can change with my life exactly it's all about giving you the tools and the flexibility okay. to manage your money in a way that works for you i'm so glad we had this conversation me too i never realized how much time and stress i could save right and how much money i could potentially earn exactly by simply automating my finances it's a game changer it is one of the most powerful strategies yeah and it's surprisingly easy to implement well folks there you have it, the secret to financial freedom unveiled. Yes. We covered so much ground. We did. In this deep dive into Ramit Sethi's I Will Teach You to Be Rich. I love that book. Me too. We explored credit cards, banking, investing, automation, everything. Everything. And I think the biggest takeaway for me is that building wealth isn't about luck. No. Or complex formulas. No. It's about making informed decisions. Yes. Taking action and building that solid financial foundation. Absolutely. One step at a time. One step at a time. And anyone can do it. Absolutely, you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to have a six-figure salary. Yep. Nope. You can start building a brighter financial future. That's the key, just start. Just start. So that's your call to action, folks. Yes. Don't wait. Take action. Pick one strategy we talked about today and do it this week. That's it, one small step. Open that 401k, yeah. make that phone call, automate your savings. Yes. Whatever it is, just take that first step and watch the magic happen. I love it. And remember, financial freedom isn't just about having a lot of money. No, it's not. It's about having choices. Yes. Having options. Freedom. To live a life that you love. And aligning your money with your values. Yes, creating a life of abundance and purpose. Exactly. And with these tools and strategies, yes. you have everything you need to start building that life today. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us on this financial adventure. Yes, thank you. We'll be back soon with another deep dive into a topic yeah. that will help you level up your life. Absolutely. Until then, keep learning. Keep growing. Keep making those smart money moves. Yes.